Yeah, I mean, it's uh, of course a very happy feeling, and, and we're very proud about it. And, uh, and but uh, then, as I, as I said in my presentation today, we, we would really like to have some more pals in in the running track uh, because uh, we, the whole industry, need to move now. I think into the LTE track. It doesn't seem that way, actually. Uh, I, I've been launching uh, 2G and 3G, and now we've been launching 4G. And uh, uh, the boring thing is, it was a little bit too easy, actually. Uh, that we haven't had uh, that much of pitfalls, and uh, so um, it's a promising technology in that sense that uh, it's so simple, easy, and optimized for data. So I, I don't fear that too much. No. First of all, uh, get, get connected to your vendors and, and let them actually do their, their part of this. Because they, they spend a lot of hours in testing and so on. So let them do that and you launch. Uh, and and uh, make a plan for the launch, not for a trial network. That, that is sort of the main message. Uh, because they can do it and uh, they have show, shown that they can do it uh, with a very good quality and so on. The other thing, is, of course, uh, and, uh, and that is uh, don't get stuck on looking at the down, downlink speed. Because uh, what really struck me and surprised me was the uplink speed and the latency. That, that is a big difference between uh, 3G and 4G. Uh, not the downlink speed, even though it's fantastic, it's 10 times 3G. But still, uh, I, I, I expected that, but I didn't expect the effect of a downlink and, and the delay, actually. pay for itself, I don't know, actually. <laughs> but, but I mean, it, it is easier to roll out an LTE network, actually, because uh, there are so many uh, nodes that you actually have taken away. And also the, the fact that we have focused on data only and not complicated it with the, the voice and the voice integration towards uh, the legacy systems and so on. So uh, if you're running for a mobile broadband network, it's easy and, uh, and, and, and a lot easier than 3D, actually. And that, that's really on the pricing model and, and also because, uh, I mean, now we're pioneers and we probably got a very good deal on, on 4G. But at the same time, on the pricing models, we, we need to do some changes there. Because uh, when we did the evaluation for, for the vendors for us, we really looked at the total cost of ownership. So the software fees to upgrade to a new speed or a new function and so on, that can't be that much more expensive because then you pay each base station several times. And I, I think that's what, what we have been doing in, in 3G and uh, where the privacy model is right now. And uh, that, that has to change from the vendors. I mean, of course, and as an engineer, I must say, we looked at all the technology and all the features and so on. But in the end, uh, among the three vendors that we looked at, uh, they were definitely on par. So uh, it, it went down to cost, cost, and cost. And uh, that was the only selection criteria. There was no technical uh, uh, difference, really, between them. Of course, a feature here or a feature there. But in the end, they all had the same performance and, and so on and the cost was the, the decision criteria. We, we should not run into the uh, flat rate track uh, at all for, with 4G. The, the pricing models that, that is actually now created for 3G and mobile broadband, we should bring that forward with, with 4G. And uh, we had a discussion during the presentation today about if we price uh, and the pricing models uh, according to speeds. And that is already happening today And uh, because there are a lot of different packages with a, a limit on the speeds and so on. And so I, it's there and we should continue now when we go to 4G as well, where, where you actually have different classes of, of service to the users.
Uh, I think one important role for the operator is really to provide a very good bit, bit pipe, so to say, and, and make money out of that and the subscription fees and so on. But then also we have to partner up with good partners that can actually bring uh, attractive content and, uh, and also good services. And, and uh, I think we've gone quite far on that track now with Talia Sonra. And uh, we can get money out of both the Bitpipe part and the service part. Uh, and uh, it's just that we, we have to sometimes maybe choose uh, a, a bad partner and learn from that. Uh, but normally we, we try to pick the good ones. It's really a smart pipe uh, strategy that you need to have, right? because that includes the bit pipes strategy. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't think you should fear that, because there, there is a lot of money in that as well, and uh, enough money, I would say. We have taken this opportunity in Talia Sona to actually change the way we work with engineering and operation of our network, and that's one thing. Uh, but uh, for the users and so on, I, I think that there are a lot of things that you can do uh, with 4G that, that isn't really possible with, with 3G. And we can see that from, from user patterns. We, we made a study of the uh, 101st days of LTE in Sweden. And uh, the, the users there, they, they are using mobile data a lot more now. Uh, and the interesting thing is the, is the iPhone users that actually use 4G a lot as well. So it, it's coupled together. <laughs> Right now that's the track we see, yes, and we need to have some kind of uh, fallback with, with 2G and 3G. Uh, eventually, I think the market and the industry will change, so we will see more of voice over LTE with the IMS and so on. And maybe that is actually the point where IMS is really taking off, because uh, we, we've been talking IMS for a long time, but we haven't really seen the application. Maybe this is the application. Yeah, it's a really uh, excellent event where, where you gather a lot of interesting people and, uh, of course, a lot of networking. And uh, then, I mean, to bring a message like I, like I bring here, uh, uh, this is probably the place you should bring it. <laughs>